they've lent. God's story, our story. St Mary's Lent booklet for 2021. A Bible passage, thought and prayer for each day, based on Hannah Steele's book, Living His Story. Talk to stories of transformation. Life is change of ourselves, society and the world. Some transformations take place gradually as the seasons move round the year. Others very quickly. Who would have thought a year ago, as we heard the first details of this new virus and then moved suddenly into lockdown, that our world would be so transformed over the subsequent months? Fortunately, not all change is this bad. Homes Under the Hammer is a compelling TV programme. Some people make a living out of buying a wreck of a house and transforming it into an amazing home. It's interesting to hear the developers' stories of their dreams for the property, find out how they came into the game and see the before and after pictures of their developments. In some cases, the transformation can be stark and you wonder whether it really is actually the same property. Discovering Jesus' good news has the same effect on some people, transforming them completely. And we've heard these extreme stories. This doesn't happen to everyone, nor should it necessarily, because everyone is different. Some people can pinpoint exactly when they became a Christian and it made a massive difference. For others, it's a gradual process or a growing awareness of God's love in their lives. Still others have been born into it, and that is, God's always been there. I remember a theology professor speaking of this as those who were once born or twice born in the faith. Or from my school biology class, the difference between complete metaphoric metamorphosis like the growth changes of a tadpole to become a frog, seemingly a completely different creature, compared to the gradual growth and incomplete change of a human child into an adult. St Paul is an example of an extreme transformation from Christian hater to evangelist, after he was literally blinded by the light of Jesus on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9. But it happened to ordinary people too. Like the man out of his mind with demons in Mark chapter 5, set free by Jesus' command. Both were desperate to tell of Jesus' good news. Paul went to the world, journeying hundreds of miles across the Roman world. The ordinary man was told by Jesus simply to go home and tell his friends how much the, do- the Lord had done for him. Some questions at this point. You may like to take your time on these, maybe pause this recording with each question so you have time to ponder. Can you think of a time of transformation in your life? And has faith been transformative for you? Do you feel like a once-born or twice-born Christian? Thinking about homes under the hammer, when Jesus came into your life as your developer, were you changed from a wreck? Or did Jesus, for you, just move the furniture about a bit? Having thought about your, how your life has changed greatly or very little, it doesn't matter, it's your story that matters. Whatever the changes involved for you, how could you put this over to someone who wants to know about your faith? However it is, sharing your story has to be you being real. 
and it's good to have already thought about it. Just as you will have done a few moments ago, reflecting on those questions. As part of it, be prepared to listen to others' stories so that they can be ready to listen to yours. Now here's Hannah's thoughts on telling your own real story and how it can make a difference to someone else's life by introducing them to Jesus. Paul knew that the gospel story could never be communicated purely with words, but it had to be lived as well. Our story becomes more authentic to people when they see that it really does have an impact on the way we live our lives. It's often through our daily lives that we demonstrate the topsy-turvy way of the kingdom of God. In a culture where people are more interested in whether things work than whether things are true, our lived experience becomes a potent advocate in our everyday witness. Sophie grew up in a family who never attended church. She went to the local church school, but it was never part of her home life. And growing up, she didn't give that much thought to the idea of religion or faith. As a teenager, she called herself agnostic. But she did start to explore questions of spirituality and wondered whether there was life after death. However, she didn't consider Christianity to have the answers to that. It seemed too mainstream. At the age of 19, she found herself living in a shared house with other young people. While she joined in with socialising and drinking, she started to be increasingly aware of a void in her life. She carried on joining in with the crowd, but there was a young woman called Emily in her house who seemed to have found a very different way of living. Sophie recalls that Emily seemed to have very different priorities. She went off to church on a Sunday and she would run a small group in their living room each week, which made Sophie curious. However, it wasn't just activities that made Emily seem different. Sophie found her to be consistently kind and caring and never judgmental about some of Sophie's life choices that were clearly at odds with Emily's. In time, Sophie began to ask questions about the Christian faith and they started talking together. At points, Sophie became angry and would vehemently disagree with Emily. But on each occasion, she was met with love and acceptance. Emily never claimed to know all the answers, and there were times she didn't know what to say to Sophie's next challenging question. But this made her seem more authentic in Sophie's book, as she saw that her faith really was a part of her everyday life. In time, Sophie was intrigued enough to attend an inquirer's course where she became a Christian. However, it was the patient and loving witness of a Christian friend who didn't just talk the talk, but walked it, that had the greatest impact on Sophie's own story. In one of his letters in the Bible, Peter writes, But in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defence to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. That's from 1 Peter chapter 3. I hope that these thoughts will help you to share something of your story as it is interwoven with God's story. Let's have a prayer to finish. Gracious God, help us to be prepared to share our own story. The reason we have for putting our hope in you. Please give us those opportunities 
and then help us to take them. Amen.